This is Situate State of Affairs, the show discussing town and government issues that directly impact you, the Situate resident. And in just a few short months, there's a strong possibility that a million gallons of radioactive waste could be disposed of in the Cape Cod Bay, a site that's just 10 miles south of Situate. That radioactive waste would come from Plymouth's Pilgrim Nuclear Power Station, which is currently being decommissioned by Holtec International. This controversial story hasn't made many headlines, but may ring a bell for Situate voters as they voted against the disposal in the ocean just last year. Kevin Weefer is with SaveOurBayMA.com, a group hoping to halt and dumping in Cape Cod Bay. Kevin, always good to, uh, good to see you, good conversations. We've been talking about this story, about doing this for a number of months now. And every time we go into this interview and I, I review my notes, I'm always shocked about the lack of chatter about this story. I mean, here in Situate, we put a, you know one minor environmental change and it's chaos. And here we are talking about radioactive waste going into the waters just south of Situate, mm -hmm. and there seems to be little to no buzz. Why do you think that is? Mm, it's such a great question and, and the perfect opening question, Seth. Um, as it turns out, I did a Google search yesterday uh, to see what kind of media coverage there's been just to get a sense for this discussion, actually. And as it turns out, there were 4,600 responses of media sources about, under the keywords of Plymouth uh, Nuclear Power Plant, decommissioning, Holtec, which is the company we'll talk about in a bit. And so 4,600, and that is in local television, that's newspaper, that's radio, that's internet, that's sort of all that coverage. So it seems to me words out there. In other words, the, the story is there to be told I have two theories about that. One is, and, and you're a good question, which is one, that because it's Plymouth nuclear power plant, it seems like a Plymouth problem, when in fact it's anything but that. It's not only Plymouth's problem, but it's a state problem and a broader region problem, including all of New England in many ways. And the second thought I have is that um, the severity, the gravity of this situation has not resonated the way it can or could, if I may, uh, with people. So it could be a very bad situation in a lot of ways, which we'll review as a part of this discussion, I bet. But generally speaking, I think that the gravity has just not been made clear by all the press coverage. And I think, too, in, in, in our talks, I wonder, too, with Citrate residents, mm -hmm. if if they feel like they did their part, because as you know, last year, May 2022, on the May election ballot, there was a there was a question that Citroen residents answered. So let's let's begin everything here. Let's kind of jump back into history. Not only that, Great. but the history of this all together, very briefly. So we Great. know this: that the Pilgrim Nuclear Power Station was built in 1968 by a Boston Edison for 231 million dollars. For years following, the station was plagued with issues and problems. And in fact, in 1986, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission called it, quote, one of the worst run nuclear plants in the country. It was finally shut down in 2019 and began the decommissioning. The de that decommissioning project went to Holtec International. Shortly after, it became known that Holtec was considering dumping radioactive waste in Cape Cod Bay. That's when lawmakers and activists took notice and started to campaign against it, including SaveOurBay.com. Very quick Cliff Notes version of the history, yeah, no, yes, no, you know. That's, that's you're very much involved, and I do think what's important to point out here mm -hmm. are the individuals that have been working tirelessly to, to campaign against this. Yeah, thanks for that, Seth, and I think it's absolutely uh, critical. There are five people in particular who have been working tirelessly on this issue since 68, uh, uh, basically, and it's Mary and Jim Lampert, it's Diane Turco, and all of which live uh, sort of in the, the general Plymouth and Duxbury area. Mark D. Cristofaro and Ben Cronin. Those five have just been um, just working in every way possible with the State House, with local representatives to do everything they can to deal with the Plymouth uh, uh, decommissioning in particular. But even during that troubled time from 68 to current, uh, when there were a lot of issues with the plan itself, um, they were, the, they were the first to come forward and say, wait a second, we're, we're not comfortable with how this is being handled. Very limited um, disclosure, very sort of closed environment for discussion, and there were real issues that were un, un, uncovered during that whole cycle. 
And you guys have been uh, doing a lot of prom uh, promotion and getting people active, and this leads us back to yep. the Situates May 2022 election with this question that was on it. And it said, uh, shall the town of Situate join with its neighboring communities in condemning the release of any radioactive waste into Plymouth and Massachusetts Bay by any entity decommissioning the Pil uh, Plymouth nuclear power plant and further ask that all local, state, and federal uh, officials take any and all legislative, legal, and executive action necessary to prevent such discharges. My thought is that residents feel like, great, we stopped it. This, this was not the case at all. Mm -hmm. What did this, what did this question do? Yeah, no, it's a And it did point. pass for 90 plus percent. Exactly, the town, the town showed up in a very good way. But showed up for what? <laughs> well, that's okay. Uh, but I, let me just start with the select board. They were absolutely great. They embraced the idea from the very beginning yeah. and approved the idea of putting the ballot on the, on the, on the vote. Um, and what that said, and a number of towns, from starting actually from Situate, Quasset hasn't quite gotten there yet, nor Hingham, but Situate South, a number of towns, I think virtually all of the towns, have had similar ballots on their, um, on their election, and overwhelming support that the dumping cannot happen, should not happen. So effectively what it is is a point of view on the part of the town, a unified point of view, if I may, that says, this is not acceptable. Seth, I've talked to you know, a rough number, over 1,000 people face to face in, in bringing up this issue. A million gallons of radioactive water is about to be dumped into Cape Cod Bay. Every single person to the, to every single person says that's impossible, just can't happen. They're, they're slack jaw, how can this be? You know, it's sort of that level of an incredulousness. Um, so I think, What's happened when we unified, unified our voice and said on the ballot that this, we are against this happening, it helped in terms of the continuity of all of the towns ringing Cape Cod Bay saying this is unacceptable. And yet, our job is far from done. And as we know, they could, the whole tech could put the nuclear waste in the Cape Cod Bay. The waste has to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. As we know, there's not really a great answer to how to get rid of nuclear waste, but what's, what's yeah. the recommended way? Yeah, that's the thing about nuclear energy, is there are no good answers to nuclear waste. Uh, even though, um, and Seth, you and I talked about this very briefly, uh, nuclear is taking on the characteristic of being a green solution. Um, nobody, including the NRC, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, or the EPA, um, are, are thinking far enough down the road about nuclear waste. The, it, nuclear, while it's running and effective and delivering electricity and power to people, it's a great solution. But then when they decommission Plymouth Nuclear Power Plant, and, and as an aside, there are 140 nuclear power plants in Europe and 150 in Asia, all of which are coming, or many of which are coming to the end of life period. So this is a global issue. We just happen to have a microcosm here in, in Plymouth of consequence. But there are no good answers to um, what to do with nuclear waste. So um, the, 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 the three options that are essentially on the table, one of which really isn't, is evaporation. Evaporation is unacceptable on the basis of it becomes airborne and the negative in, impact and uh, implications of uh, nuclear waste is even greater, it's, so it's compounded. Uh, the other option is to dump it into the bay. And the third option, and the really only acceptable answer, is to ship. Um, there's a town, Andrews, Texas, that's agreed to accept it. It's sort of the new uh, Yucca Mountain in Utah, which is now closed. Um, and uh, so, and, and even that, it's, it's not a good solution. It just happens to be the best solution with a difficult set of circumstances. Let's say Holtec goes ahead and just dumps into the bay. Yes. Impact. What, what would the impact be? That's, that's Can you even say what the impact well, would be? Yeah, well, yes. In fact, I, or at least I have some notions, and these are all based in research that's been done over the last four to five years. There was an economic study that said up to $2 billion worth of um, revenue could be in jeopardy. And that would be everything. It's the fishing industry that we all know and, and, and thrive from. In fact, one of my cheeky questions to people is, would you eat a clam that was born and bred in nuclear waste? And the answer is no. 
So all seafood sort of goes away, uh, and certainly fish as well as um, the shellfish. Uh, tourism, the perception of nuclear waste being in Cape Cod Bay and the amount of tourists that come to town you know, starting today and moving through the end of the fall, uh, that would be severely impacted. Real estate, there's a person that's an advisor to uh, Save Our Bay MA who is the Massachusetts Director of Realtors. And she said she's already seen, because of the nature of this and the news that's, that's available, uh, she's seen a 30% fall off in Plymouth's real estate uh, uh, sales. So, and directly related. It's not just because of the economy and sort of the bubble that we went through. Um, so there is, in $2 billion, but it's not, it's not the money. It's really the health issue more than it is the, the pure uh, dollar and cent impact of it. And talk a little bit like when we think the environment and the Cape Cod Bay. You've, we, yep. You did mention to me just briefly about the waters and how it filters out because I said, look, the ocean's a big place. It can take kick and sort of filter things around. Mm -hmm. You argue this is not exactly the case here. It, it, as it turns out, it isn't. And, and our own um, uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute has done a study, and they, they, not to go into it because frankly, I'm not competent, but there are balloons that they can put to trace uh, currents and, and water passage, as it were. And they've found, uh, conclusively that the border in Cape Cod Bay essentially doesn't leave the bay. Given the nature of the Cape itself, it tends to circulate and launder itself right in the bay, which one of the beautiful things about that is that's one of the reasons we see such a whale population come in and, and birth their calves. And, um, and it's sort of all of the aquatic activity that transpires in there. It's because the waters stay and they are warm and comfortable for fish. Uh, and it's certainly, just to be uh, comprehensive about it, some water gets out, of course, uh, but generally speaking, the waters tend to circulate within the bay itself. The craziest part to this entire conversation, I think, at every single time, and I'm sure people at home are thinking it too, mm -hmm. is that the Environmental Protection Agency has said this is illegal. Yes. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission has said this is illegal. Mm -hmm. Governor Moore Healy, at least when campaigning, has said this is illegal, mm -hmm. and yet here we are, Right. talking about the possibility. Right. How is this How is this possible? And there's one more layer that's of great consequence to the whole thing. All of those groups, as you just mentioned, but the settlement agreement, when Holtec purchased the, uh, uh, the plant uh, from Entergy, which was the previous owner, uh, they signed an agreement that said that we will, um, we will um, abide by all of the rulings, state and uh, federal, associated with our purchase, of which one is recognizing that this is illegal. So Holtec themselves, the offending company and the decommissioning company, has said, um, we acknowledge that this is legal in the settlement agreement. And then all those groups that you just listed, I have a, a negative bias that I'll admit in a way, although I, to me it matters, is, and uh, it's anecdotal in a way, a tobacco gives $10 million a year to lobbyists in Washington. Nuclear power plants give a billion dollars to the Nuclear Regulator Regulatory Commission a year. So my view of that is the, the NRC is basically a PR agent agency for uh, power plants, in, in nuclear power plants, I should say, to be clear. And so they're going to say, ah, go ahead, it's fine, or you know, look the other way. And, and then the sort of the broader issue is Washington and bureaucracy itself. Things take forever, never mind our state house, which is sort of has its own timing and process. Uh, Washington uh, timings uh, are, are measured in a minimum of four to five years, maybe longer in many cases, and especially with regulation of uh, nuclear activity. So the shorthand is, yes, it is illegal, and that's the most important thing that we, you and I can discuss, basically. Um, and the only rationale that we can use, other than Holtec, is taking a very legal action right now to try to um, have a a permit to allow them to essentially readdress the illegality. Um, it feels as if that could be resisted, and most specifically, if I may, by our new governor, Maura Healey, um, and, and her newly appointed chief, Melissa Hofer, 
uh, uh, chief, uh, environmental chief, I should say, and uh, where they have said that their air quotes for from Moore Healy is not on our watch. We're not going to let this happen. And they have the legal authority to stop it. One subset of that, if I may, just to sort of make this point, is all of the individual towns we talked about, should, should a lawsuit and or injunction transpire against Holtec, it would be enormously expensive. It would be millions of dollars. And no single town can absorb that. And to bring a coalescence of towns to unify all the bills that would need to be passed as sort of within their towns themselves to, to come up with tens of millions of dollars to fight whole tech is not, not feasible. Whereas at the state level, you know, not that anybody wants to spend millions of dollars to have a legal battle. However, at the state level, it is plausible. In other words, Moore Healy has the authority and access to a budget to be able to fight whole tech as needed. I get concerned that when residents hear this, these big organizations, these big complicated agencies, yes. that they feel like they simply there's nothing they can do. It's this is this is this is too big. Let's say people want to take action. What, yeah. what like what can they do? Yeah, that's the right question. And and I think the most important thing I could share with you and, and the audience at large is uh, save our bay ma dot com is a reservoir of a lot of a lot of information. In other words, most of the things we've talked about. And a secondary uh, source is pilgrimswatch.org. That's for a very deep dive. There's a lot of legal information there. Um, and I guess my encouragement, my hope would be that people would go to Save Our Bay or uh, Pilgrim's Watch and educate themselves and then spread the faith, to be honest. In other words, more people need to be talking about this as much as if I may, humanly possible, uh, to support the fact that we as a town and certainly the region uh, resist this as much as humanly possible. Make your uh, opinion known to Maury Healy and, and Melissa Hofer. Um, there are um, petitions that are on uh, Save Our Bay MA that you can, it's easy to sign. You just put in your name and sign and it, it essentially goes to the governor forthwith, or at least her her team. And um, so I think that those actions, in other words, awareness is our best defense at this time. Great. Yep. Great. I applaud your efforts and your group efforts. Kevin Weaver, always good to see you and chatting with you. I'm sure we'll chat more in the future. And remember, if you want more information, go to saveourbayma.com.